Hey everybody, how's it going? Well, it's Saturday, and I thought I'd come out here and do a little content for everybody. So, getting right into it. The old Rayo 65, it's been a struggle. It's been wanting to burn dirty. Even though I fixed the leaks, it's holding oil like, you know, like a champ. Um, Let's well, burn dirty. So those, this whole week, I've tried all the different methods. I tried pipe cleaners. I tried narrow bottle brushes. I've tried compressed air. I tried BBs, rattling them around in the air tubes. And then finally, I tried acetone, two doses. And um, it, that knocked some stuff loose. As you can see, I'm burning a lantern right now. And it's the Rayo 65. It's burning much better than it was before. It's still smoking a little bit. As you can see, there's some exhaust on the uh, chimney, or the globe. But it's burning much better than it was. So, for now, I'm gonna say it's a done deal. I I will probably try a few more, uh, a few more things. I might try the BBs again, rattle it, you know, more, uh, and knock some more stuff loose. And hopefully that will get it to burn better. But right now, it's burning. And it's not terribly dirty. Um, dirtier than I like, but... Eh. It's alright. It's better than it was before. So there. I like this lantern a lot. I do really enjoy it. For now, I'm just going to take the back seat. I have something else to share. got this from eBay. And this is a Dietz Hilo. Yeah, he's like, well, really, it doesn't look like a Hilo so much. What's, how's it a Hilo? Well, um, for those collectors out there that are aware of this particular Hilo, you know that this is a rare one. Now, the, the Dietz Hilo, there's been you know, some debate when it was introduced. The earliest Hilo I had at one time, I, I recently uh, passed it on to another collector. Um, they had uh, round air tubes with the crimped edges like the early Monarchs, or early round tubes that Dietz manufactured, um, which were not numerous because in the early 1900s, most of the lanterns Dietz made, well, specifically the hot blast, like the Victor, uh, the Acme Inspector, the Buckeye Dash Lamp, and all the different variations that were pretty much based off of the Victor. Um, square air tubes. Your cold blasts from the same era were round tubes uh, for Dietz. Now, around 1912-1913, Robert Dietz felt that the Hilo should have square air tubes. Okay, uh, He was a big fan of the square air, air tubes and that's one of the reasons why the uh, Dietz company continued to make square tube lanterns into the early 20th century. Um, the Victor, for instance, that was still a square air tube lantern up to the point where they dropped it from their catalogs. Um, same with the Dietz OK. The Dietz OK went into the 1930s, uh, maybe even early 40s. I know the Victor, I've seen examples that had production dates as late as 1940, 41, which is kind of surprising to me. I thought they kind of dropped it in the 30s, but you know, you always learn something new. Um, this guy, the, the Hilo became a square air tube lantern for just a brief period, right around, you know, the mid 19 teens. Um, and then when Robert Dietz passed away, then the company says, well, that's an expensive, uh, process to make square air tubes. Um, it's labor intensive and it takes more effort and it's a little more costly to do because they take one piece of square tubing, they cut it in corners, fold it, and then they, yeah, see, it agrees. It was nodding yes, it agrees with me. <laughs> uh, they, they crimp it, well, they, they fold it and bend it and then they solder the, the, the joints and then they put it all together. You know, it, it is late, more labor intensive than uh, what they, the, the, the tooling that they created for the Monarch 
They just, you know, stamped out the, the air tubes, crimped them together, and required very little soldering at all. Um, so that was a lot, a lot more cost effective. Excuse me, a little throg, uh, frog in my throat. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> so there you go. But after, yeah, after Robert Dietz passed on, um, thanks to Madison Kirkman for the information about that. He, uh, he enlightened me about that, and I appreciate the information uh, to Madison Kirkman. Um, so that's one of the reasons why the Hilo only had air tube, square air tubes for a brief period. Um, after he passed on, then the Hilo had round tubes again with a single uh, crease uh, that we see in the later Hilos from the 20s through the 1940s. The Hilo was eventually dropped from the catalog in 1947. Um, it had a good long run, absolutely. Like uh, 40 years at least. Um, so there you go. This thing is awesome. I got, well, it came off of eBay. Um, it is all original, except for the paint. It has some paint on it, but it was applied early on. And it's a very dark green. It's kind of like a, I call it Pullman green. You can probably see it in the light. It's it's a very dark kind of olive green. It's it's a deep green with a little more yellow than forest green. Um, I call it Pullman green, mainly because Pullman cars, railroad passenger cars of that era were painted this uh, similar color. And same with the General Electric fans of the 19 teens and early 20s. They are painted a similar color green, which um, a lot of machinery and electric motors were also painted that as well. Um, GE called it Pullman green because it was the same, essentially the same color as the railroad passenger cars made by the Pullman coach company. Um, so I call it a Pullman green. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, the rest of the lantern is bare metal. It has a nice aged, uh, you know, slightly subtle uh, surface rust patina to it. Uh, I did a very minor cleaning on it, uh, but it's really cool because there's some little details on this that separate it definitely besides the square air tubes from the other hilos, like the lift uh, loops. Okay, that's how it's, that's how it works. Uh, but you'll see that the tab, the loop here, is soldered directly into the air tube. Later examples, it was just an, uh, an appendage on the guide wire loop. Um, that they, they, they did away with these little uh, horseshoe clips that the Victor had and Monarch. Uh, then they just did little loops and they were more cost effective. But this is a straight on soldered loop into the air tube. And then the, the loop on the globe plate is soldered into the bottom of the globe plate. Isn't that cool? It's pretty neat. Um, so it's, it's heavily engineered for what it is. Uh, it's definitely a more substantial high-low than its counterparts later on. Um, but of course it did cost more money. This period definitely has the the pesky thin stamped uh, brass fuel caps that are very hard to find in good shape. They, they bent easily and then stopped sealing properly um, and or were lost or broken. So you'll see most of these without fuel caps um, and a cork <laughs> or something similar uh, placed inside just to keep it from leaking. From the spout. Now, it's funny because I had that um, reverse Monarch that I uh, I cleaned up and it worked. I sold it to Willis Miller the third from the Tubular Lantern Group, and uh, hey, how's it going, <laughs> neighbor? And um, you know he bought it, and you know it, it will take a cap. He he feels he has the cap for it. It came without a fuel cap on it, um, but you know I. I I found a cap that would work for it, and I used it, but it went to another lantern, so I had to keep that. But um, he's gonna, you know, enjoy it. So I, I got rid of that nice early Victor with the cold blast lift on it. You probably remember it in the, I called it the backwards monarch. <laughs> Anyways, um, so this guy is really neat. It had a very small leak right in the front of the skirt. So I patched it with a little bit of JB Weld. Yeah. Some people might say, oh, yeah, yeah, you should seal it from the inside with the, the seal all or whatever that you use, you know, then you don't see it. Well, um, I agree. I usually do that. Um, this fount, someone had to replace the bottom 
And they did a good job of it. This is not the original bottom plate. And you see the, the generous soldering around the edges. This was definitely done, you know, sometime in the 1930s probably. Um, so the lantern has character. It's distressed. I'm not going to clean it any further than I already have. Um, it, it does burn when I filled it up. Uh, it, it held oil, but it did just kind of weak from that little tiny pinhole. It's very small. So once it's cured, and once it's, it's you know, uh, it does its thing, then I will definitely um, sand it down a little bit and make it blend in a little better. Uh, and then it will be fine. It, it, you know, uh, JB Weld is dark. It, it doesn't, it dries kind of darker than this. And if I need to, I might touch it up with a little something or other just to blend it in better. But as long as it keeps the fuel from escaping, I'm all right with that. So that's cool. I am happy to have this. Now, now for something special. Even more special, because this has been an ongoing project and it, it's been fighting me. I think I finally have it licked. Now, this is a shout out to subscriber number 100. Um, this was a gift. This was a donation to my channel. And this is the Rayo Pony. And a shout out to Josh for contributing the globe for this lantern. And also a shout out to the Antique Lantern, and Lantern Joe, uh, for supplying the missing parts. Um, this is the Rayo Pony, and I think she's ready to go. I finally was able to seal up the fount enough. It doesn't leak. Um, and I'm going to light it for the first time for everybody here as, a, as an honor and a courtesy to those involved in making this happen. So we're going to lift the globe here. I have a fresh new wick in it. Now, I, I will say this. Disclaimer. I have not blown out the air tube. So there is a chance there's something in the air tube that will create to cause it to burn poorly. But soon enough, we will find out. Okay, we got fire, friends. We got fire. All right. Okay. So far, so good. Look at that. It lives. The rail pony. Ryan and Cowboy. Check that out. The the rear lens. Yeah, man, that's cool. It's a thing. I think I can crank that flame up just a little higher. It's not smoking at all. It's happy. I think the burner's just a little sits a little loose, but I'll fix that. But um What do you think guys? What do you think? Pretty pretty awesome. I'm happy. Well, thank you again to all those who made this possible. I really appreciate it. When I started this channel, I had no idea that some of my subscribers would be so generous. I really am honored by that. Uh, it means a lot to me. Uh, never did I think as a child, getting into old lanterns, or lanterns in general, that I would be doing this, that I'd be creating content on YouTube that would be seen nationally and almost globally. Um, it's kind of, kind of exciting and kind of an affirmation that, well, there's other people that just just as crazy as I am about these inanimate objects of history. And I, I, I appreciate it, I really do. So from me out here in the old time cave, sweaty and balmy as it is today to my subscribers thank you for your continued subscriptions your generous donations of old lanterns and parts and uh and for those who supply these parts uh with an affordable price i really am appreciative of that opportunity to have original parts for these old antique lanterns and uh yeah Thanks again. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So, without getting overly sappy, I'm going to cut out now. Enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you guys again very soon. Bye-bye.